Here's the first video that you should be watching to get ready for the Chapter 4 ta quiz. And it is just discussing the very beginning of Chapter 4, which talks about what integration does, your basic rules, primarily your basic power rule, how to find general solutions, and then taking it the next step to find particular solutions. So this video is going to have two slides. We're going to do uh, all general solutions, and then we're going to switch sides and do all particular solutions. So you get practice with the basics. So this particular side is saying find the general solutions, the differential equations. What I tried to pick were problems that you had to do something before you started integrating and with rewriting with some algebra to help you. So when you look at this first one, and it says find the general solution, first of all, it's not written properly. So we're going to rewrite it as x to the 3 fifths power power divided by root. That will allow us to put it into a form where we can apply that general power rule. The power rule was power 1 greater, so the power 1 greater is 8 fifths, divided by that power. Instead of dividing by a fraction, it's faster to write it as multiply by the reciprocal. And then we always write our plus c at the end. This is referred to as the general solution because I don't know what c is. I don't have any more information in order to find it. And that one's finished. The second one, what's extra about this one, is you have something that's written as a quotient, which we don't have a quotient rule, so you have to simplify it by doing a pretzel type problem. You'll see one just like this on your quiz. So when I simplify it, 2x cubed over x is 2x squared, and 4x over x is just 4. So you're taking one algebraic step in order to get, in, get it to be something that you can apply your general power rule. Now when I do power 1 greater, it's 2x to the third over 3, and then integral of 4 is 4x plus c, we have my general solution, and we're finished. The third one, the reason I wanted to show you this, is again, there is no such thing as a product rule for integration, so you have to get rid of parentheses. Anytime you're asked to integrate something and you have a parentheses present, right now we have to distribute. And you'll see this happen on your quiz with an algebraic type problem. You also see it happen on your quiz with a, qui with a trig based problem, where you have to distribute to get it to be something that you can integrate. So when you distribute 3x times x squared is 3x to the third. 3x times 2x to the 1 half is 6, and then you have to add the exponents, so you have 1 plus a half is 3 halves, and then minus 12x. Getting rid of the parentheses, allowing you to go term by term and use your power rule. So the integral is 3x to the 4th over 4, plus 6x to the 5 halves over 5 halves, we'll clean that up in a second, minus 12x to the 2nd over 2, we'll clean that up in a second as well giving me 3x to the 4th over 4, or some people prefer to write 3 fourths x to the 4th. When you take the 6 and you multiply it by 2 fifths, that's what you're going to do when you multiply by the reciprocal, you get 12 fifths, and then you still have x to the 5 halves. And then the last one, you can reduce 12 over 2 is 6, x squared plus c. So this is a good mix of problems showing you when it's necessary to rewrite, showing you when it's necessary to do algebra, whether it's a pretzel or distributing. Really, the only thing that I didn't put on here, make sure you practice uh, as you're getting ready for a quiz, is dealing with negative exponents. When you deal with negative exponents, you have to rewrite them in the beginning to get them ready. And then when you're done, you want to rewrite so you make sure there's no negative exponents in your answer. The second part of this review is looking at how you find particular solutions. The difference with particular solutions is when you're done with the basic integration, where you get the plus c, the general solution, you're given an extra piece of information. That is your extra point that you're looking at. It's usually presented as a point. It can also be presented visually on a graph as a point. It's also called an initial condition, and it allows you to figure out exactly what c is. So we start the same way. We want to integrate my derivative. When I do that, I get x to the third plus, I have 4x to the second over 2, which you might be able to look at right away and say that's 2x squared, minus 2x plus c. Now you want to make sure you get in the habit of writing that as y equals, because that gives you a place to put your x and your y. When you're looking at your point, the number in the parentheses, that is your x value, the number that it is equal is your y value. So it tells us that 2 equals 1 cubed, which is 1, plus 2 times 1, minus 2 times 1, plus c. The 2's will cancel, so I get 2 equals 1 plus c, so that means c equals 1. Get in the habit of putting it back in to get my particular solution would be x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x plus 1, and that is your final answer. It's referred to as a particular solution because you were able to figure out what c is. I've got one more. This is actually going kind of the double step. Now we're given a second derivative. We want to get all the way back to the original function. So we're going to have to integrate twice. And with each one, we're going to have to find c before we move on. So I'm going to start with my second derivative. When I integrate my second derivative, I'm going to get the first derivative. And I'm going to get x squared plus c. 
That's the general solution to get the first derivative. I need to figure out c now. You can't integrate again because you can't integrate c until you know what c is. So I'm going to take this line, this initial condition, which tells me when I put 2 into my derivative, or equal to my derivative, then I put 0 in for x, giving me a c value of 2. So that means my first derivative is x squared plus 2. Now you have to integrate again, giving you your original function. So now I'm going to write f of x, and it's nice to write what you have so you keep everything straight. You get x to the third over 3 plus 2x plus c again. Now I'm going to use my point, my initial condition for my original function, plugging 3 in and then 1 in for x. So I get 1 third plus 2 plus c. So I do need a little work. You do have calculator access if you need to use it. Um, 2 plus a third would be 7 thirds plus c. I'm going to subtract 7 thirds from both sides, giving me a c value of 2 thirds. So my final answer, I'll write it way up top. Again, my final answer is done when I get back to the original function f, is x to the third over 3 plus 2x plus 2 thirds. And it's perfectly fine for your c value to not end up being an integer because c represents any constant. So this is a good introductory video. It kind of takes you through a lot of the things that we did in section 4.1. Really the only thing that you would also want to take a look at, make sure you're comfortable with your basic trig integrals and make sure you're comfortable with negative exponents.